What's up everybody, it's John J.D. DeServio from Black Label Society and Cycle of Pain. Chilling with Roxine today uh, down in my studio in the pit. And uh, all started here, man, actually, you know, in this house uh, when I was like, shit, man, I was about eight years old. The first time uh, my buddy uh, showed me a picture of Kiss is where it all began for me uh, musically, man, because I, I had older brothers. So I was into like Jethro Tull and other bands like that and thought they were the greatest. And um, my buddy showed me a picture in third grade. He said, this is the best band. I said, Kiss? Who the hell is Kiss? And then he showed me that. I was like, they're the best band. So from then on, I wanted to be Gene Simmons. I found out he spit blood. He breathed fire. You know, everything that, you know, a kid would want to do. You know, so I, I loved it. And every day... Uh, We'd go outside and like spit fruit punch out, you know what I mean? Or then I graduated up to like food dye. That was really cool. And then actually after that, my I had older brothers, like I said, so uh, he would like they torment me, you know, whatever. Uh, and uh, we had the old ice trays. They were like this metal ice trays. And uh, my brother Andrew said, "You want to spit blood for real?" I said, "Of course I do. Who you know? F who don't? You know?" So he's like, "Take your tongue and stick it on this ice tray and pull it off." And then and you'll spit blood for real, thinking that I was going to be like in pain and hate it. And I did it. And I was like, this is amazing. And he's like, you're totally fucked up. So then from then on, you know, I uh, did that a few more times, but mostly the food diet and the, and the lighter thing with the breathe fire, you know. And that was uh, all through my, you know, I guess six, up to sixth grade. Because actually we had a band in six, we had a band in fifth grade. We sang Detroit Rock City dressed up like this. And then in sixth grade, we actually played our instruments and played uh, Ozone from Ace Freely solo record, everything but the the lead solo part, because uh, my guitar player was too nervous to play it live at the at the uh, at the the adult one at night, so we didn't do the lead solo part. But uh, that was it, man. I started playing, and then you know my buddies that I was playing with were taking lessons, and they'd show me stuff, and then you know. Uh, I'd see other other bands around, you know, being a kid, there was a lot of bands at that time. You know, the, the rock scene was so so much different, so it's completely different then. Like, in, in our high school or whatever, there was like six bands, you know, people had bands back then, man. Nowadays, the kids are too busy, you know, playing Guitar Hero or, or, or you know, friggin', you know, anything, you know, Call of Duty or whatever and stay, staying home and playing videos and, and, and shit like that. And we were all playing music and... Uh, Back then, it was just so much better. But I remember uh, just being inspired by like kids that from my town that were like you know f four years older than me. You know they already had bands and they were playing and stuff. And uh, I remember I was at like whatever it was like seventh grade or eighth grade. There was a, a this dance at, at my uh, school, and a, f a friend of the family was in the band actually playing. This guy Artie Landro and um. And I was just blown away. He was playing Kiss songs. Like, oh, how does, you know, I didn't really know how to do all these bass lines and stuff. So I was freaked out, you know. And he showed me a little bit, you know, a couple things then. And uh, I just kept going, man. And uh, took, you know, music theory in, in high school, which was cool that they actually had that back then. And um, I don't know if they have that in, anymore, but uh, it's killer. And just spawned on, you know, more knowledge. And, you know, by like 13, 14, my ear really started to develop more. So that's when like Maiden came out and... You know, and I could really actually hear the bass, so that's when I really got totally into just playing music and, you know, quitting soccer and all that stuff, whatever. It was just all music from then on, you know, like I said, up, you know, in high school, and then, you know, I was playing with, you know, Joe Taylor and, and Greg back then, you know, the guys in Cycle of Pain, and we were playing together when we were 14 years old, man, playing Battle of the Bands and house parties and getting, you know, the cops would come after one song, you know, we'd set up all our shit, you know, practice all this stuff, get to play one song, and the cops would come, you know, I mean, it's every time, it never fell, but uh, we just, you know, we always played, and then, uh, then I went to school, I went to Berkeley, we were all supposed to go to MI, we were all going to go out to MI in California, and uh, Greg's parents talked me into checking out Berkeley because Greg's sister was going there at the time and uh and I applied and I was the only one who actually went from our band so um but man that was a great experience you know such a learning you know freaking just amazingness uh the players the kid the students and the teachers were amazing but the students was equally as great you know what I mean um learned so much from them as well as my teachers that was killer then after that um well actually before that is when I met Zach so that's a big part too, obviously, you know, because uh, he was in a band uh, playing at this place, Close Encounters, that my band Tyrus was playing at, and he was in a band Cyrus, which is it's so gay, but it's the truth. 
It, I had Tyrus and he had Zyrus, which is pretty funny. But anyway, I heard about this guitar player who was killing. This kid is ripping. So I went down there in the daytime at the sound check and Zach was playing, man. I was like, oh my God, this dude's amazing, you know? So uh, then um, we went downstairs in the dressing room. We had this little gorilla amp, you know? And uh, one, it was only one input, so Zach would play, you know, and I'd play the bass, you know, without the amp. And then he'd give me the chord and I'd play the bass and he'd play the guitar. And uh, I remember I broke his bass player's string. It's pretty funny, but uh, and then um, you know from then on we were just bros, man. And then like a year later he got the uh, the the Ozio edition uh, from you know from Mark and uh, Dave Feld, you know from Mark Weiss and Dave Feld. And then uh, he uh, he got it, man. And I was like I, I knew he would get it because he was just burning and you know loved Randy and um, and it's just crazy. And then the rest is history from then on, man. You know what I'm saying? So that was like shit, 89, 87, I guess he was an Ozzy. So uh, then I left school in like 89 and uh, the first gig I had was with Jody Bon Jovi of all, of all things. Uh, it was Bon Jovi's cousin. I left, I left college, thought it was going to be like this massive thing. But it was cool because I got to record at the Power Station in New York. And, uh, wait, you know, like Steve Ferroni plays drums for Eric Clapton and all, a whole bunch of people and all these other cats were there. And it was really cool for me. And then, uh, then after that, man, I just, you know... I left that like a year later and I got in Lita because uh, Sharon was managing Lita at the time and, I, and Zach recommended me and I got that gig and then uh, then from then man it just you know it's been nothing but music man so pretty blessed in that aspect. First album I ever 90. bought was uh, actually it was Kiss Alive and I bought it off my buddy who sold it to me but he kept for 75 cents but he kept the, the album cover and the tour book and everything but he just sold me the records because I love the music so much anyway so. So that was the first record I like bought, and then the first one I really bought in a store was uh, Dress to Kill, Kiss Dress to Kill, and it was a two guys. I bought it from two guys, not two guys, you know, that were hanging out. There's just this was a store named Two Guys, and uh, man, my first concert was when I was 13. My brother took me to see Bob Seger at Nassau Coliseum, and uh, you know I wanted to see Kiss or whatever, but I mean, or whoever. Sabbath or something, but uh, it was Bob Seger and I was, and I went and I had the best time of my life. It was insane. Just you know, you're walking in you're at the arena. You know, everybody was smoking. You know what I mean? So I was probably a little high as a 13 year old from uh, the secondhand smoke. You know, and possibly firsthand. But uh, it was insane because uh, Bob Seger's sax player Alto Reed. He did. He was doing a, a solo. It's like towards the end of the concert, and he wasn't on the stage. Everybody's like, "Where is he?" You know, you hear it, and then all of a sudden he hits this one high note, and a, a spotlight uh, shines in the upper deck, and he was up in the upper deck jamming, and it was so insane, man. I'll never forget that. I actually still have the ticket stub. It was August 1980, which is insane. You know, I'm sure like you know most of the people who've been watching this, well, all two of you, you know. They were watching me, uh, probably weren't even alive then, so pretty insane, man. Like, the rock scene was just so much, it was way different, you know, growing up. Actually, like, when I would come home from tour, it was like, night, like 90 or whatever, I created all these jobs around the, uh, my neighborhood just because, you know, I, I didn't have no gigs, so, like, there's places like the Madison Inn, Simcoe's, Magoo's, these were all, like, local, like, bars, you know? And uh, they didn't have bands, so I went in there and I said, you know what, let me put a band together to come in here and play. The first band that we played with was uh, Ready, Willing, and Able. It was me, Brian Tishy, and Joe Taylor. And uh, then me and Joe would do du duos called uh, Drunk and Disabled. <laughs> Because that's what it I became became by the end of the show. Joe was all, it was wasted. We had it just you know, and it, it was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, man. So I actually created like jobs for like a bunch of a bunch of bands. You know what I mean? Not only my band, but then other bands would play at these little bars, and you know, and it, and it lasted for quite a while, man. At least ten years, and then um, you know, but then they slowly dried up, man. Just like I was saying earlier, you know, which sucks, man. The, the scene is definitely not as cool as it was, man. So. But uh, it was a that was a big part, man. It was a lot of fun back then too. That was like the you know the whole decade of the '90s. You know that was that was badass, man. You know, and then ever since then, every decade '70s, '80s, '90s, the millennium, gonna be doing it for you know the rest of my life. You know, God willing, and uh, just blessed, you know, to be doing that. You know, music my whole life, and then sharing. You know, you know, I teach, so that that really helps too. Just you know, keeping keeping it alive, man. Trying to inspire people and. Um, 
you know, it's it's all about it, man. You know, that's what we're that's what we're called lifers. You know, like Zach, we talk all the time. You know, there's certain of us that are lifers that are always gonna do music, whether in a big band or not. You know, even just playing like me and Zach talk all the time. If we weren't doing Black Label, Cycle of Pain, all these other things that we do, we'd you know be in a cover band, a wedding band, teaching back here at a music store, something. Always music. You know, we're in it forever. You know, thank God. You know, so. Um, but man, yeah, that's it, man. Just you know, gonna gonna be going out on tour again. It's like we never end, you know. So uh, and uh, the new record's coming out, and I got a new cycle of pain uh, EP coming out this this week or this month, and then uh, that's it, man. We'll just be hitting the road, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Right on, man. So check out all the interviews here on RockScene.com, man.